How you doing? Thanks. Welcome to the uh, Nisha Jackson Show. I'm Rusty Humphreys. Uh, Nisha just did one of the silliest things I've ever seen. She got a bottle of Pellegrino and poured some. What is this stuff that you poured in there? Um, so this is the new product and the new company that we have. It's called Brand X. Yeah. And this right here is going to set you free. This is a berry stick. And we put the stick, which is a, an energy powder, into a bottle of water. I just happen to yeah. be not do, paying attention. Do and not I put do it the Pellegrino. Pellegrino. Do regular water. But you could use Pellegrino or champagne, whatever you want. But no, not champagne. I'm just kidding. You can put it in <laughs> Pellegrino. Just don't shake it up. Because I shook it up. Now I can't drink it because it's like going to blow. Yeah. Anyway. But that would be entertaining but and might product, be fun for later in the program. This product you can get on brandex.com. Okay. It is the natural rival to five-hour energy and much better for you. By the way, we have a spokesmodel back there. If you would please, okay. Vanna, if you please just point at the bottle of water and do a Vanna White kind of thing, that'd be great. Thank you. Very, very nice. Excellent. Who is her? Now, she looks familiar. She's been on the show before, she right? She has. You know, we got a we got a big response when she was on the show last time. I know she's in this room and we're talking about her, but that's okay. It's, it's all her. good stuff. It's yeah. good stuff. So what's her name? That's Jennifer, and she's going to be joining us today. We talked about vibration last time she was here. And, you um, opened it. What are see? you thinking? <laughs> what are you doing? This is not working out so well. No. It's my birthday. It looks like bubbly. Don't do that. <laughs> Okay, well, drink it now and then it'll be okay if you like no, guzzle it. We're good, we're good. Okay. Anyway, we did a show on vibration when Jennifer was here last time, and it was an amazing show. It was very impromptu, as today is kind of impromptu. We just drug her off the street and asked her to come in and do a show on meditation and what 2020 really means energetically. Yeah, she came in. It's going to be very said, interesting. She said, hi, and I said, guess what? You're going to be on a show today. What? Yeah, you're going to be on a show. And so she's doing great. I'm 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 she's, super happy about this. I know she's going to be awesome. Okay. All right. Um. Any kind of setup we need? You, anything else you wanted to get to before we got to our? Uh, no, no. Right I there. think I've done enough damage today. I've got my <laughs> my Barry Pellegrino going. Okay. Um. In in uh, keeping with the the theme of power and energy, she is going to switch places with me. Yes. In three, two, Magical. one. Okay, yeah, I'm back here. You're going to be at the start of the show. Nisha, you're interviewing. I'm just going to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. So you guys have fun and be all energetically awesome. All right. Okay. Thanks, you Rusty. All right. You got it, Rusty. So today we have Jennifer on here. She's going to be talking to us about what does 2020 mean energetically speaking, which I, I love talking about that kind of stuff because I think it's, it's relevant to our lives. And um, some people are more into it than others. I happen to be very much into it because I, I find it super interesting. Um, but I also wanted to have Jennifer talk to us just for a little bit about how we can quiet our minds this year to not only improve our health, uh, especially our emotional and mental health, but also to move us along the path that we're supposed to be going down in our lives. And one of the ways that we figure out what that path is, is we got to get quiet. We got to turn the mechanism off and be able to um, let new ideas and new energy come into our minds so that we're not always just so cluttered up. So I want to talk about those two things today. So welcome. Hi, thank you. Happy Nisha. New Year. Happy New Year. Um, correct, we're, we're about three weeks into the new year as this is being uh, yes. broadcasted. Okay. Yes. So this is actually a perfect time to talk about New Year energy, even though you in the audience might be seeing this a few weeks after the first of the year. But energetically, the Gregorian calendar that was made up by the Romans, and it's not actually at the first of what we consider this year, January 1st, is not actually the end of the energetic cycle of the year. That actually comes in around January 21st, 22nd every year. It's a little bit different, like a couple of days or whatever, but around the three weeks into the new year, is when the new cycle begins for our creative process mm -hmm. in which we have four quarters of the year. It correlates with the seasons. It's very much like uh, the natural cycle of planting seeds in the winter, knowing that they're underground and that they are actually sprouting. And then in the spring, we start to see them come up. We tend them. We pluck out the ones that aren't so healthy and we let the, the very fertile ones grow. The summertime is when we get to kind of tend them and make sure that the bugs aren't coming in and things aren't, you know, eating away our, our new sprouts. And then in the fall, we get to reap the harvest. So that's really the creative cycle. And, and I use the, 
the idea of planting our seeds and what I'm, what I'm actually metaphorically talking about is planting intentions of what we want to create for the year. And so in January, February, we talk about, you know, well, we talk about it in January, really, we talk about New Year's resolutions. And so these are really the seeds that we're setting, right? But because we're not actually in the new initiating cycle until the third week of January, this is a big reason why people fail at the New Year's resolutions, because we're not in the space January 1st to actually start new things. We're wow. still ending. I didn't know that. Yes, we're still ending the cycle of the year. Oh. We're not so in initiating that, energy. That, that's why people take a little bit longer to kind of get in a groove. Absolutely. Ah, yeah. I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one should. We all kind of need to understand that... Uh, this cycle is a natural cycle and we're a part of it. And so the idea that we're supposed to initiate something when the energy is still finishing the previous year is very confusing. And then a lot of people feel like they failed and, and, you know, after three weeks, they're like, I didn't do it. I, you know, I failed at my resolutions. It's right. such a common thing. And it's actually because, you know, it's just the timing is much better to start right now at uh, about three weeks in. Very interesting. So what, what would you say that you feel, you know, in my last show, we talked about how 2019 was such a great year for sort of weeding out things that weren't serving us well. And people, I, I know a lot of people, myself personally, and a lot of people around me spent a lot of the year identifying things that were not serving them well, whether it be internal beliefs or people around them. Um, or their career path, um, that, that they identified things that weren't working for them very well, and they had the courage to get rid of them and, and change their course. So that energetically, 2019 was a bit like that. But 2000, 2020, for those who took that seriously, they're ready to launch. I mean, they're, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And we still have time to keep, we always should be weeding out things that aren't working for us and serving us well. Mm -hmm. But maybe you could talk just a, a little bit about what 2020 means as far as, um, energetically speaking, as far as giving us a lot of um, movement towards success and, and reaching our goals. Yes. Uh, 2020 is supposed to be a very powerful, momentous year in terms of uh, being able to do exactly what you're talking about, moving towards the direction of our dreams and being able to see more of that come to manifest versus the last few years have been a lot of kind of sticky energy. It's like, you know, it's that two steps forward, almost feeling like you're taking more than one step back. It's almost like a step and a half back. And you're like, oh, why can't I get to where I'm intending to get? I, I feel like there's been a lot of that energy, even though people have been doing a lot of work around getting clear on uh, what they want and putting the right efforts into kind of getting rid of the old kind of fear states and um, things that are holding them back or limiting them. And then feeling kind of frustrated that they don't have enough forward momentum to see the results. And so I think this year we'll see a lot more results. Yeah, and awesome. there is still uh, going to be a little bit of push and pull. And so we have to, I think one of the big lessons this year is to really cultivate faith in your process, trusting the process, trusting that, again, you know, like the universe has your back or higher power has your back, whatever your belief system, this, it, it, you know, energetically, your um, way of thinking about it in terms of higher power and or universe, it it is supporting you. I love that. Trust the process. I have a shirt, a little workout shirt that says "Trust the process," and it's such a great, simple little sentence. It's just such a great affirmation to say "Trust the process" because yeah. so many times we stay in our head, we're we're on a path, and we know in our heart, we know yeah. we know intuitively that we're on the right path, we're doing the right thing, but then our head gets involved, and we start questioning. No, oh, maybe this isn't right. This could be. This could end really badly. You know, this this might not be the best thing for everybody else, even though it's the best thing for me. And so then you question yourself. But I love just telling yourself stop and just trust the process. Yeah, that's such a cool thing to say. It's huge. It. It's huge. And I think, you know, our heads do get in the way because we want, our, our mind is very set on trying to either control everything. And so uh, we, we want to know exactly how things are going to work. And that's what the mind is good at actually is saying like, okay, I'm, this is how I get from A to B. But sometimes it doesn't go the way you think it's going to go. And then we think we're doing it wrong or that, you know, we're not being supported or, you know, life 
is just like too challenging and you know it's not working and you know yep. it's very defeating for the mind when that happens and then we can go into kind of fear and or feeling you know feelings of failure or all these kind of things that feel so, terrible <laughs> i'm so glad you actually just said that because one of the things that i think helps us as i talked about in the beginning, beginning part of the show is to get out of our head a little bit so that new thoughts and ideas and um, um, wonderful, lovely things can come, come into us because we're not all clogged up. And one of the ways we get clear and we get open is we get quiet, right? So I want to talk about, you know, you're, you're a huge advocate of meditation and, and quieting your mind, uh, which I think is a very great spiritual practice for people. And so but a lot of people think just traditionally you have to be sitting on the floor in a very uncomfortable yeah. position for 20 straight minutes, you know, or 30 if you're lucky, uh, or an hour, I can't even imagine. And, uh, and, and then if you don't do that, if you fail at that, then you really can't meditate. And so I, I wanted to, you're so good at like encouraging people to get quiet. So just maybe talk about that for a minute. Yeah, and thank you for bringing that up. You're absolutely right. Uh, there's this kind of dogmatic idea that we're supposed to sit in stillness and quiet the mind. And if you know we don't get the mind quiet, then we're failing at meditating, or you know we're not we're not doing it right, or it's not working, or, or it just sucks because it's really like <laughs> uncomfortable. And I don't meditate that way. And that idea is out. Uh, there's a million ways to meditate. Um, and it's really about quieting the mind. So a lot of people that are, you know, runners are in a meditative state. Uh, people that are, you know, you can listen to, the, there's all these apps now. I mean, I think all of that is really valuable and valid. And um, there's so many approaches. I actually have a really active mind. So I need to lay down when I meditate. And it, it puts me in um, the, the prone position. It actually gets my head to quiet in um in a stronger way than if I'm sitting upright. Maybe I should and, lay upside down since I can't turn my brain up. <laughs> Maybe that would be even more impactful. Well, and what I don't meditate uh, without listening to something. I always listen to something, and so I think guided meditation is great, especially for people that you know have a problem kind of just sitting in quiet and and in the racing thoughts. And also, don't judge yourself for having your mind in and going back into thinking, you know, whatever about life and about you know what your day to day is when you're trying to meditate because that's what the mind does. And so it's just to like notice. And as you practice, meditation is a practice and it takes time and you get better at it and you get more and more relaxed in the mind and you can, you know, get into higher frequency states and, you know, gamma brainwave states and all of that. But, you know, usually it takes some time and, and you got to find what works for you. Everyone's yes. different, yes. but there's so many different options in terms of meditation and that whole idea that you have to just sit there and be totally uncomfortable. I mean, it works for some people, but it works, you know, for, I would say a much fewer percentage than, yes. yeah, than, than what you would think. Yeah. yeah. And one of the big things I like is, um, there's sound healers that do vibrational sound healing work where they're using a lot of different frequencies and tones and, and so it much actually does the work for you. You just have to sit there right. and listen. There's so much good research to show that that is a healing on just a whole a complete different level. Right. It's wonderful. And there, you're right. There are apps. I, I just downloaded a, an app recently called Insight and uh, it's such a great app. You can, there's thousands of different meditations, different categories of meditations, um, but the goal is to turn your brain off because we don't really get a chance. If you think about it, we are constantly, we've trained our bodies and our minds to be constantly stimulated. And whether it be our phone, our computer, our TV, our work, whatever, constantly having input coming into our brain and our brain wasn't wired to withstand that constant stimulation, overstimulation. And so I love that. I, I meditate every day when I, when I exercise because when I'm out in, I love being in nature. I love being outside. I try to be outside every day. Um, that's my time to just open up my mind and really think, how do I want my day to be? Like what, what is, what is my best self that I can put forward today? And um, just thinking about how to respond and, and what kind of person, what kind of, a, what kind of loveliness do I want to put forward today? And I, for me, exercise is a really good time for me to do that. I don't really listen to anything else. I'm just, just kind of just quiet. Mm -hmm. um, but you can do it 
you can do it 10 minutes before you go to sleep at night. I mean, you could do it at three o'clock in the afternoon when your head's about ready to blow off your shoulders from stress. You could go just put your shoes on and walk outside for 15, 10, five minutes. And so there's just so many different ways to do it. But the key is just doing it, right? The key is doing it and finding what works for you. And and yeah, I'm making a regular practice out of it, but you're right. It doesn't have to be a set amount of time. You can take five minutes here and 10 minutes there. I mean, that's really important stuff. I mean, right. it, it's good to just take a little bit if, if that's what works for you and then do a little bit later or what, you know, whatever, find, find your way. Um, and there's no one way. But if you want to find uh, this sound healing stuff that I'm talking about, Jonathan Goldman at healingsounds.com has a lot of great stuff. You can download MP3s or order CDs if that's your deal, whatever. And um, you literally can just listen and it's doing energy work for you through the sound vibrations. And so that's a really good one because it can balance your chakra system. Uh, you know, it can increase your brainwave state and you're just sitting there passive, but believe me, it's, it's, you're meditating because you're getting your energy into a space in which your mind is not controlling the show and you can be in your body and it's doing the kind of like energy healing work for you. And the name of that was again, healingsounds.com. Healingsounds.com. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So we have, as a company have taken this whole thing very seriously because I have realized in the last um, 30 years that I've run a business that that it's getting more difficult for people today. It's getting more difficult for people to stay balanced, for people to stay happy, for people to be able to manage all of the stress that's in their life, whether it be their family, their job, their you know, relatives, uh, financially, I mean, everything. And so um, Jennifer's done several retreats for our company where she has come in and done special meditations and teachings that have been really helpful to our employees and practitioners within our organization. And so this next year, we have hired Jennifer to come in um, from a corporate standpoint and work with our company on um, doing meditations um, um, and teachings so that we can keep people supported and really giving them some downtime and some encouragement throughout the year. So um, I love that about you. And I love that you said yes to that. And uh, I'm really looking forward to how that's going to support our employees and our practitioners within our, within our clinics. So I'm excited for 2020. Me too. I think it's awesome. And I love that we're doing that um, as a group and as a collective and in terms of um, a group energy dynamics, it, it, it's very helpful in a group to collectively support each other. Yes. And so you cultivating that for your team is great. And, and I'm happy to be a part of it. It's awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today. We um, will have Jennifer back again in the future and, and tackle some other topics about energy and, and quieting your mind and, and, um, and looking also at really manifesting some of the things that we really want to move towards in our lives, whether it be financially, emotionally, mentally, uh, the kind of friendships, soulmates, and um, so many of the things we can achieve that we just, we just need to believe it. We need to believe that we can move towards that. And most of what we want, we want to be focusing on. We talked about that at our last show about really feeling what you want, really having the emotion like, this is what I really desire, this is what I really want. And then, and then feeling all of those emotions connected to that because what it does is it puts you on almost like a fast pass to get it. And it sounds too good to be true, but it really is wherever your mind goes, there your body goes also, your whole life goes that way. So um, happy new year again, and uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Go to NishaJackson.com. Oh, NishaJackson.com. Rusty's so good at this.